All right, 10, 27, 28, let's do that. We're gonna do some single step equations. This is just preparing for proportional relationships in equations. We're just gonna do a little bit of review. So we'll start on page 12 and we'll see how far we get. So the top of this page we'll write 7.2 proportional relationships in equations. Okay, and then we're going to do a little bit of review of these single step equations. We'll say review topic. Solving single step equations. When I say a single step equation, all I'm saying is we are going to solve for a variable when it only takes one step. So there's only one operation happening. So let's take a look at what our goal is when we're doing this. Okay, there's my beautiful <laughs> trophy. What is our goal for solving a single step equation? Well, what we want to do is we want to isolate the variable. If you've ever heard of isolation or an isolation station, you know that isolate means to get it alone. So we want the variable on one side and we want a number on the other side. So the answer to one of these types of problems is going to look like, try this color, okay, so the answers are going to look like on one side, you're going to have the variable alone and then you're going to have the equal sign and then you're going to have a number okay so the answers are going to look just like that so for example you might have x equals 5 you might also have y equals 1 half right doesn't have to be a whole number, it can be any number, but it, and it's going to be whatever variable was in there and it's alone. So what is, what is that number? What does the answer mean? Well, the answer for these questions is, this is the number that makes the equation true. And what I mean by that is, if I put this number in for x, then the whole equation would be true, okay? Or if I put this number in for y, then it makes it true. Then everything on the left equals everything on the right. And we'll see some examples of what that looks like here in a second. So we know what our goal is, but how, how do we actually do it? Well, we use what we call inverse operations. And inverse operations are just the things that undo our regular operations or the opposite of our operations, okay? So we're gonna remind ourselves that inverse means opposite. Okay, and all they do is undo what we are doing. So we'll make our little, we'll make ourselves a little little picture here. Undo 
the operations. So which ones undo which? Let me draw a table for you. So if you see addition, how are we going to undo that? We're going to undo it with subtraction. Okay. Because if I have um, a positive five and I want to get rid of positive five, what do I do? Well, I subtract five, right? If I have five apples and I want to get rid of them, I want to undo them, well, I take them all away. So if I see addition, I undo it with subtraction. If I see subtraction, we're going to undo that with addition. Because if you owe someone money, that would be something like negative. If you owe them $10, to undo that, you have to give them $10. You have to add $10 to their bank account, right? So to undo subtraction, you're going to use addition. Now, what about multiplication? If you see multiplication, you're going to undo this with division. Because we know that these are inverse operations of each other. And the inverse of division is multiplication. So if you see division, we're going to use multiplication to undo it. And we're just doing single step equations so we don't have to decide which to do first yet because there's only one operation that you have. Okay, so these are our inverse operations. If you see addition, we're going to use subtraction. If you see multiplication, we're going to use division. If you see subtraction, you're going to use addition. If you use division, see division, you're going to use multiplication. One thing that you have to remember though is that everything needs to stay balanced okay so when we have an equation when we have an equation it's like a scale let me see if i can draw a scale really quick so it's a beautiful drawing of a scale so if you've ever been like to a store or something you've tried to weigh something this is a scale right if i put something here on this side this weighs it down, right? It goes down. And so if I do something to this side, I have to do it to this side. If I put an apple in here to even out the scales, I have to put an apple here, right? So equations are the same thing. They must stay balanced. So we need to say, remember to stay balanced. And what that means if you do an operation to one side you have to do it to the other as well Okay, so anytime we're working with equations, this is a very important rule. You have to stay balanced. If you add five to this side, you have to add five to this side. If you subtract five from this side, you have to subtract five from this side. Otherwise, those scales step don't aren't balanced. So I'm gonna pause the video for just a second and give you some examples. All right, hopefully that's not too messy, but I wanted to show you some examples of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So anytime we're solving these, um, we're going to just ask ourselves, what do we see, right? And I look here and I see I have X and I have something being added to X. And remember, my whole goal is to isolate X, get X all by itself so that we no longer have X um, with something. In other words, I want this to be X plus zero. I want nothing there, right? Because X plus zero is the same as just plain 
x, right? So I want this to be zero so that I can have just an x. And how do I do that? Well, I see addition, and if I have, have positive $5, how do I get rid of that $5? Well, I subtract that $5. So anytime we're going to undo our operations, we're gonna always draw a little line down the middle here to remind ourselves these are each side of the balance. And so if I do it to this side of the balance, I also have to do it to this side. So here I have positive $5 and I want to undo that. And I know to undo addition, I use subtraction because positive $5 and if I take $5 away, I now have zero. But remember, if I do it to one side of the equation, I have to do it to the other. And what you're gonna remember is that this positive five and negative five or positive five minus five turns into zero. So now I have x plus zero, which is exactly what I want, right? Because x plus zero is the same as just x, right? So I can just write an x because that zero becomes invisible, right? So x plus zero is the same as just x. So we have x equals, now since I did this minus five to this side, I have to do minus five to that side. So 27 minus five is 22. So I now have x all by itself on one side and a number on the other side. And remember our answer, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be a number equals, or x equals some number. And what that tells us is this is the number that makes it true. If I put two, 22 right here, and I said 22 plus five, what would that equal? 22 plus five, well, yep, yeah, sure, it does equal 27. So we're on good shape. Let's look at another addition one. We're gonna see some that have decimals here. Okay, so I have x plus 10 is 27.5. Now, again, you might be able to do some of these in your head, right? So you're like, why am I even doing these inverse operations? Well, here's the thing. When we get to complex multi-step equations, you can't just do them in your head. And um, I taught algebra two and pre-calculus and kids would try to just guess their way into them and it just didn't work, right? So guess and check only works for a half minute before you have to start using actual operations. So that's why we're doing this, okay? So x plus 10, so we see that it's positive 10 plus 10. How do I undo that? If I have some money and I wanna get rid of it, I just take it away, right? But if I do it to one side, I've gotta do it to the other side. And when I do that, remember if I have positive 10 of something and I subtract 10 away, this is what we call a zero pair. They turn into zero. So now I have x plus zero, which is just x. And over here I have 27.5 minus 10, so that would be 17.5. And you can see how it's a little bit easier if I actually do the operations than trying to guess and check, especially with these decimals, okay? So our answer in this case is going to be x equals 17.5. Now we have these subtracting ones, right? So we see subtraction with x, how do we undo it? Well, again, we're gonna draw our line. And we see subtraction, that means we have to do the inverse operation, which is addition. And so if I owe somebody $3, that's what this means, I owe someone $3, we're going to give them back $3. We're going to add $3 to their account and therefore I don't owe them $3 anymore, right? It turns it into zero. But if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So we recognize that if I owe $3 and I add $3, so if I subtract $3 and then go back and add $3, if you think about that on a number line, that makes that zero. So that's a zero pair. So now I have x plus zero, which is just x. And I have 10 plus three, which is 13. And you can see when I saw subtraction, I used addition to undo it. So my answer here would be x equals 13. And remember what that means is, is I put 13 in here, 13 minus three equals 10. We're gonna draw our line here. We see subtraction, so we need to undo it by doing the opposite operation or the inverse operation, which is adding seven, okay? So we subtract seven and add seven, those turn into a zero pair and we're left with x on this side, and then 
13.2 plus 7. Well, we could just add right down, right? 2 plus 0 is 2. And there's our decimal place. 7 and 3 is 10. So that carries the 1, and we get 20.2. And again, you can see how it's really helpful to actually do these inverse operations instead of just trying to guess our way into it. Okay? So we get 20.2, and what that means is if I put 20.2 right here, 20.2 minus 7 is 13.2. Now let's look at some multiplication and division ones. These ones sometimes get a little bit tricky for people because they forget what is actually in between these two numbers, 3x. What this means is there's three x's, right? x plus x plus x, which means three times x. There's a little multiplication symbol in there. So when you do not see any operation, it means multiplication. That's it, it just means multiplication. Okay, so if I see multiplication, what I have to do is I have to do division because um, you know, that undoes multiplication. So 3x, I want to start by drawing my line down the middle. To get this x all alone, I divide by 3, but if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. And remember, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1. Now you might be saying, but over here I wanted it to become 0, x plus 0. But if you think about multiplication, think about if this became 0, that would be a problem because it would be 0 times x, which gives us 0. So really, we're just looking for 1x. We had 3x's is 36, so our question is how much is 1x? So we just divide to, give this, to make this 1, and we get 1x because 3 divided by 3 is 1. So 1x, which is just x, is equal to 36 divided by 3, which is 12. Okay. So what that means is if there are three x's, or say three cups, with some number of pennies inside of them, and all together the pennies equal 36, how many is in each cup? Well, we know 12 is, because 12 times 3 would give us 36. Let's try this next one. We want this to become 1x again, right? And remember, this is multiplication, so we need to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, or the inverse, I should say. Okay, 2 divided by 2 gives us 1, so now we're left with 1x, which is exactly what we wanted. But since we divided this side by 2, we also have to divide this side by 2. We're going to get 11.2 on that side. And you see how it would be really difficult to guess your way into that, and that's why we do these inverse operations, because it's just every single time. Okay, now these ones are tricky because you see this, you see x over 4, and you think, what in the world? But remember, a fraction bar is really just division, so this means x divided by 4. Well, what is the inverse of division? Remember, to, if we see division, we have to undo it with multiplication. So we're going to multiply this by 4. And that's kind of, kind of tight there. But if you see that, what that would do is now we have a 4 on top and we have a 4 on bottom. Oops, forgot to draw my line. We have a 4 on top and 4 on bottom. And when we have a 4 on top and a 4 on bottom, they turn into 1. So this is what we wanted. We wanted this to be 1x. And now it is. But guess what? If we do it to this side, we have to do it to this side. Okay, so now this turned into 1x, which is exactly what we wanted because remember 1 times something is just that thing, right? So this is just x now. 1x is going to give us 12. So our answer is 12, and we can just leave that 1 out because we don't need it anymore. It's just invisible x equals 12. And what that means is 12 divided by 4 is 3. And we know that's true. And we'll see how to check these here in a second. Okay, so we have x divided by 3 equals 10.5. So now we have to undo the division. Remember, this fraction bar means division. So I undo that by multiplying by 3. But if I do it to one side, I do it to the other. Forgot to draw my line there. So these turn into 1. So now we're just left with just x, but we have 10.5 times 3, which is going to be 31.5. And 
And what we know then is that says 31.5 divided by 3 is 10.5. So I know it seems a little bit messy because I have so many of these here, but this is how we solve single step equations. You just use the inverse operation. Now here's the thing that I love about equations is you can check your answer. You can tell if you got it right. So let's turn the page over and we're just going to talk about checking your answer. You don't have to check your answer, but I highly recommend it. Okay, so we're going to say check your answer. Because we know that the answer that we get is what makes it true, right? It's whatever makes that thing true. So let's do another one. If I had x plus 3 equals 10. So I'm going to draw my line down the middle. I'm going to use inverse operations to make that x plus 0 because I want the x isolated. So plus 3 and minus 3 gives us 0. So I'm left with x equals, and since I had to do it to one side, I got to do it to the other. 10 minus 3 is 7. So I figured out that x equals 7. That's my answer. Now we're going to check it. And to check it, what you do is you take this, let's see, we'll do this color. We take this answer and we plug it back in for x and we ask ourselves, is it going to make it true? So instead of x, now I have a 7. I said, okay, that unknown number, it's not unknown anymore. We know it, it's 7. And so then I ask myself, is 7 plus 3 10? Okay, and since it is, Since it's true, I know that the answer that I got is correct. And that's what's so beautiful about these equations is you can check your answer every single time. Let's look at one more. What if I said x divided by 5 equals 12? So some number divided by 5 equals 12. We're going to solve this by using inverse operations. Remember, what's this? is x divided by 5, so we got to multiply by 5, multiply both sides by 5. Well, that turns this into 1x, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we have x equals 12 times 5, which is 60. So we got our answer, right? We have our answer, but now we have to ask ourselves, is it true? So we're going to go in and check it. I'm going to say 60, we're going to put that in place of the x, divided by 5. Does it equal 12? 60 divided by 5, yep, sure enough, it does equal 12, yes. It's true, so we know our answer was correct. Our answer of 60 is correct. And there you go. That's solving single step equations in 24 minutes. Oh, you're so great to have watched this entire thing.